The one thing I try to wake up with every morning. Sometimes it's hard, but I do it every morning. I do my best. I'm not going to say I'm not going to try. I try, but I do my best. I wake up with gratitude. It doesn't matter if it's for just sleeping in a nice warm bed, sleeping in a nice room, sleeping in shelter, sleeping in, you know, a little bit of comfort because no comfort, no comfort don't, don't hurt all the time, but everyone would rather be in their comfort than, than discomfort. But I'm grateful for everything I have in my life. It's taken me a long, long damn time to get where I'm at, to have what I have. And I'm not gonna lie. When I was looking for an apartment to come down here to Camp Verde so I can, you know, commute, I uh, know, during certain days of the week to uh, to Prescott Valley so I can do my do my practice. I was just I was just filled with just straight up gratitude because it's it, it, in this in this day and age of cancel culture and all kinds of other bullshit. Folks don't appreciate what they have. They don't appreciate where they're at. They don't appreciate the time, place, or space that they're in. Me, I appreciate it all. I'm grateful for it all. The good, the so-called bad. To me, there's no bad. There's just challenges. There's there's challenges that get put in your way on your road to certain successes that you want in your life. And, of course, being from Flagstaff and trying to break out of there for the longest time when this opportunity came up for me to to do, you know, massage somewhere else, to move somewhere else, to have a to start a different life. I, I was grateful. I'm grateful for the small minded, bigoted ass people who do live in Prescott Valley and Prescott who keep me on my damn toes every time I go into my every time I go into my damn room to do massage. Why? Why would anyone be grateful for bigots? Because it tests me. It tests my resolve of how I don't want to be in my life. This whole move has been a big test of exactly, and I'm not kidding folks, of exactly what I don't want in my life. I don't want to live in small towns anymore where possibilities are limited, where possibilities sometimes don't exist. Yes, but you create your own opportunities. But when people have a certain mindset do you know how hard that is? And it's not, and it's, and I know what you're thinking, oh, you're just always harping on white folks. No, black folks, Mexicans, every race does it. When you go into their community, you are fit, you are going to be faced with those damn challenges. And it's going to be hard for you to get past the initial humps of trying to show people what you got. But when you walk into a culture of bigotry, of, ig- of ignorance, and stuff like that, when you walk into something where, you know, it feels like certain people just kind of foster it. They don't try to have them put. They don't try to put a handle on it. That's not good leadership to me. That's not good. That's not good business to me. That's just letting people just do whatever they want to because you're part of that culture too. But being part of that culture doesn't mean I have to be a part of it. Which is why I've I have decided. You know, I promised. I promised my employer, you got one year out of me from this, from my start date. When I, from my start date, when I signed that application as, as a contractor from that day until year, you have me, I can tell you right now, I'm not sticking around next year. You know, nope. I can't deal. I can't, there's certain things that I just realize I don't have to put up with in my life and I won't put up with in my life. And there's certain things that no one should have to put up with in their life. Folks know your worth, know your worth. Be your worth. Work your worth. Live your worth. That's all I got to say. Know who you are. Know what you got to do. Let the good times roll. And of course, this is Big Daddy. And you are listening to Big Daddy Forever. So going on this trail right now, I go. I, to, to me, roads are trails. Everything's a goddamn trail to me. If you guys haven't noticed by now, when I say a trail, that means I'm off on an adventure. Driving from... Camp Verde to Prescott Valley every morning when I do have to work, the days I have to commute over there, it ain't gonna lie, it's a damn challenge. <laughs> I have to challenge to keep my my speed under 80, even though on the highway it says 65. Legally, you can go seven miles over. Uh, eight is pushing it. Nine, you're fine. If you heard the whole, uh, if you know, if any of you out there know any highway patrolmen, nine, you're fine. Ten, you're mine. <laughs> so, yeah. Remember that nine, you're fine. Ten, you're mine. And I have been pulled. I haven't been pulled over yet. But in the past, I've been pulled over, and they say, "Do you know how fast you're going, sir?" No, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll tell me. And then what cracks me up? They're like, "Well, you were going this much over the speed limit." Oh, 
okay. I said, I wasn't paying attention. I was off of my own thoughts, but I was paying attention to everyone that was on the road and I was being cool about it. He said, okay, no problem, no problem. Just as long as you were aware that, you know, of your surroundings. He said, oh yeah, always. Always, I ain't trying to hurt nobody. But so far I've been lucky. I just passed a highway patrol officer going, uh, da, 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 where am I going? 74. He's looking the other way. He ain't coming. At least I hope he's not. And right now I'm going through a big old thick patch of fog, folks. I wish I had a camera to show this to y'all, man, because I ain't going to lie. This is this is pretty tough. I like this. People people always get scared of the weather and stuff like that. I, I know people who are afraid of the wind. I know people who are afraid. Well, my mom, she's afraid of lightning. But then again, that was like instilled into her. It seems like all Mexican families know that. Don't, don't play. That's lightning. Get away from the window. I don't know why. Is this just I, that's something I've always heard all my life? You no, know, th- those little fears, those little fears that keep us from, I guess, progressing in life, from, you know, getting us out of our comfort zone. Because I don't like. I don't lie. I I don't like comfort zones. You know, some comfort is good in your life. Don't get me wrong. You know, a nice warm bed. You know. We don't want to sleep. No, unfortunately, you know, I'm not, not putting down the homeless or anything like that. But no one wants to live homeless. I've lived the homeless life for a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, it fucking sucked. It really did. That's why. That's why when I hear people who don't have any sympathy for the homeless people, or they come up and ask them, "Hey, do you have any change?" stuff like that, they'll either keep on walking by, don't acknowledge them like they're less than human, and I sit there and look at them like, "You better be grateful. You're not in their spot." People who aren't grateful. You know, for you know, for no, for their comforts. I mean, because I know, I know, I know a lot of people who they live for their damn comforts, folks. I'm not gonna lie; that's all they live for. They live for their damn comforts, and I don't get it. A little to me, discomfort is where the challenges is. It's where the growth is. It's where it's where I find the biggest challenges in my life. It's it's, it's the spots where I found where I thrived. I'm not gonna lie, I I found out who I am, and. I'm grateful for it, but you know, to each their own. I, I'd rather have, I'd rather have, you know, my challenges than someone else's challenges because isn't that what life is about? You conquering your challenges, you living your best life, blah blah blah, yak yak yak, and you know all that good stuff. It, it's 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 funny because you, ooh wee, this dude's all on my ass. No, he's not high. They're, they're not highway patrol folks, but he is just on my ass, and I'm not going any faster. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, what was that? Ah, discomfort. Yeah, be in your discomfort once in a while, folks. Discover who you are. Discover what challenges you. Discover what makes or break you. You know, I know a lot of people who get broken by their discomfort instead of seeing it as a challenge to, oh, hey, this is this, what's this? I, I like this. I like this. Yeah, yeah, you should like your discomfort. You should. You should revel in it. God damn. You should, you should thank it. You should bless it. You should wash its feet. Clean its toes, all that good stuff. Ew, no, I don't know if my sister Julie heard this. She'd be like, Ugh. <laughs> she hates feet. <laughs> she hates feet. She even hates her own damn feet, folks. I'm not kidding. She hates her own damn feet, and it cracks me the hell up because I'll, I'll throw my feet on her, your socks and all, and everything, and it just cracks me up. I'm gonna get right on this dude's ass. He passed me up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Cut that motherfucker off. Fuck him. <laughs> Oh boy, highway accidents, you gotta love them No, you don't, there was almost one right in front of me But luckily it didn't happen Anyway, folks, I hope you're doing good Now I know it's been a while since I've been on here And I know I dropped that little that little shorty the other day And uh, a lot of folks said, hey, thank you for coming back on But you know, that was that was really short You know, I just, I, I, I they were short because That seems to be a people's attention span nowadays And I'm like, alright, cool I'll make these little short ones just so people can, you know, have a have a quick sound bite, quick ear, you know, something in their ear real quick. And I'm like, okay, cool, 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 cool. But I love y'all. I miss y'all. I really did. I'm grateful that you guys are here. I'm grateful that y'all come by and say hi. Leave me questions either in my my Instagram or on my Gmail. You know, thank you, folks. Really, seriously, thank you. Uh, some of y'all have, have asked me, you know, some of y'all still drop by and ask me questions, ask me, hey, you know, Big Daddy, you know what about massage and do you think massage is for me? Do you think this is for me? Do you think that's for me? I'll tell you straight up, honestly, life is whatever you make it. You were given this chance, this 
I always said you were given this time, place, and space to make your mark in this world, okay? And your world is you, not the great outside world and stuff like that. Because until you can do something for yourself, you can't do shit for the world. You can't do shit for nobody else. And I strongly, without a doubt, believe that wholeheartedly, 100%. You can't do shit for nobody else until you get right with yourself then. And only then will you be able to do something for the world. You have a gift. Find out what it is. And the best way to find out what it is, do like so many other people did. Do, do like I did. I sat there, I meditated, and I started blocking out all the damn noise. I, and what's the noise? Your own inner fears, your own your inner voice, other people's voices. My voices for the longest time were my family's, okay? I know some of y'all, and some of y'all even ask me, why do you always dog your family? I don't dog my family, I'm just telling the damn truth. This, this, I'm telling, you ask me a question, I'm telling you the damn truth of what went through my damn head, what prevented me from progressing for so damn long, and how I overcame it. So, progression 101, all right folks, progression 101 with Big Daddy, you know, this. I'm, I'm no professional, but I'm just telling you what worked for me. I had to say, Fuck you to all the voices in my head. My grandparents, I love. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I love everyone dearly who I name off, but you know they just their voices in my head just really stopped my my progression in my life. It felt like my grandparents, my mom, some of my brothers and sisters, and you know in the household I lived in, there was really no no inspiration. There was really no no talk of you know doing better with your life and everything was like it is what it is maybe this is just your lot in life uh no i refuse that hold on okay sorry i had to open and close the door real quick because i kept hearing this wind and my door wasn't closed all the way i'm surprised i didn't see that shit <laughs> anyway well I, I just had to start sitting back and meditating and asking myself where do you see yourself in the future there was times I saw myself in the future where, you know, okay, when I was younger, my future consisted of listening to everyone else who had a voice in my damn head. And that led to loneliness, bitterness, stuck in the same place, stuck in my own shit. And I'm not going to lie, folks, those voices, those voices won for a long fucking time. It wasn't until I decided I was going to move to Hawaii where I finally made the choice. Okay, I was given an opportunity and I had passed up every opportunity because some of my family members said, oh, why do you want to do all that? You just need to stick down somewhere. You just need to you know, get off your shoulders and get housing like I did and just be content with what you have. Those were people in their weakness wanted me to be weak like them, okay? And I, I just couldn't do it no more. I was having a talk with my mom when I was getting ready to go to Hawaii I was telling her, you know, I was excited about the opportunities and she, I can tell she wasn't feeling it. She turned around and she said, you know, I can make you stay if I wanted to. And then I was the first time I ever burst out. I'm not staying in this motherfucker no more. I said, God damn. I said, why can't you ever be happy for me? Why do you want me to stay here? What the fuck do you want? I said, shit, can't you just be happy for me for five damn seconds? Can't you please be happy for me? She started crying. I just don't want you. I just want us all to be together. I said, it's not about you. It's not about you. I said, I'm sorry, mom. If you stop me on this, I will run you the fuck over. And I mean it. I will fucking hurt you. And I know what some people are going to say. You said you're just going to hurt your mom. Everyone, I can tell you right now, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to miss the message of what I said And they're just gonna think You said you're gonna hurt your mom Fuck you motherfuckers ahead of time Stick your own finger up your ass So with that being said I didn't go to Hawaii My so called Best friend <laughs> During that time uh, 36 hours before I was supposed to go down there She texts me and says That's not gonna work out Blah 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 Excuse 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 Side note Everyone who has called me best friend or who I've called best friend has ended up fucking me over one way or another. 
they've shown their true colors they've they've just done different things i've noticed over the years that just don't that i just aren't in character with them either they get comfortable with with our relationship you know how it is and they feel they can start treating me or acting certain ways with me however they want to and to me that's not fucking cool when i speak up when i say something that's when i notice they don't like it have i lost no have i lost so-called best friends yes i have and if i haven't lost them has the relationship changed absolutely has it changed for the better or worse it all depends on that you know best friend for me i wise up i start watching i i you know that and again this this is totally just me i start watching their actions i start seeing if their actions mirror their words or if their words start mirroring their actions i i i become very cautious around them i become i guess guarded guarded is the word like i said i, I start i start paying more attention and yes i protect my neck at all costs from that point on no fucks given i don't care this is me because that's what's happened in my life when i show people some kind of you know kindness or love and stuff like that it always seems to come back on me and then you know and that's fine there's a lesson in that I don't I don't see anything as I don't see it as bad at all anymore. I see I see all this as lessons to be learned. It's, it's part of my journey. So when people so folks, I'm not gonna lie. When you get those voices in your head, when you get your own self-doubt in your head, when you get mom or dad or your brother, your sister, or that piece of shit teacher who told you back in the day you ain't gonna amount to nothing, let them talk. Let them talk. Let them say what they have to say. Seriously. Just sit back. And just listen. Feel what they're saying. Okay? Get in your feelings about it. Get mad. Get sad. And then turn and listen to your heart. Because your heart, your heart don't lie. Your heart is never gonna lie to you. Your heart will tell you flat out, is it them or me? That's what my heart told me finally. It told me that so many times when it came to dealing with the voices in my head, be it with me getting ready to move, my brother. You know the shit that happened last year and earlier this year with C Plus Studios and the podcast. My heart told me flat out, them or me. I will choose me from now on every single fucking time. No fucks given, no no apologies, no if ands or buts, because I'm I'm 50 years old, folks. 50 years old, and I've, I'll be damned. I'll be damned if I spend. The next however many years I have left under someone's boot heel, being controlled, being told, no, let's not do this. Let's not do that. Fuck that shit. You don't do that shit. I'm me. I'm going to do me. That's why Papa Dukes exists. That's why I write my poetry books. Oh, my poet. Yes, you folks, I still write poetry for those who ask. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. I got I honestly have material now to publish four books. I just haven't. Why? I don't know. Maybe because the first three books, I got out of my system what I needed. I I, I was in the, I was in a, a certain place. I fell in love, got my heart broken. I was on a journey, and I chronicled all that. Could I write more about that? Yes, I can. And to me, life is all about the journey, not the destination. Where before it was about the destination. Where, where, what's my end game? I don't have an end game. I'm living this life, breaks off all the way until the motherfucking end, going sideways, broken, beaten up. I don't want, I'm not going to my grave in, 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 a, in a beautiful body, in a well-preserved body. Why? That tells me I just haven't lived. In my opinion, that just tells me I haven't lived. Hell no. I'm, I'm sore right now. There's, I got aches and pains. And that's just telling me, Philip, you're just living life. Hell. I've gone skydiving. That voice in my head that kept telling that no, there was a voice in my head that just kept telling me particularly, play it safe, play it safe. Why do you want to take these risks? When I skydived, when I went with my niece, my my Miha Vivica, who who took the challenge with him, I love you, baby. Thank you for taking the challenge with me. 
for me, it was a big fuck you send off to everyone when I jumped out that damn plane. The fuck's given. He's happily floating around up there in the air still. He's probably like, hey, what the fuck was I sweating? What, what was I sweating? And once in a while, me and Air, I call him Airborne Philip. Me and Airborne Philip, we reconnect once in a while. How you feeling, brother? He's like, hey, what the fuck were we worried about? Why the hell were we stressed out about all this shit? Why, why, why? We're living our lives now. Our, we're living our, yes, lives because, you know, there's me and several other people in here fighting for a position. <laughs> fighting for that good position, though, folks. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not, it's not bad. And if it is bad, to me, it's not bad. It's, it's a challenge, some stuff I need to overcome. But long story short, fill your Fill, fill those fill those voices and tell those voices to fuck off. You have this one damn life, okay? You Well, we live several times over. Our bodies are energy, and energy can't be destroyed, no change or anything like that. Our bodies are, no, our energy just transfers from body to body to body, okay? You're here now to learn lessons for that next life. That's why you're, that's why you are, consciously conscious of this life right now so why not why not take the brakes off why not say fuck it and just live this best damn life okay yes we all know people who don't live very healthy productive lives not your business that's on them sure you can step in you can interfere and tell them hey you know what i'm here for you you can actually step in and tell them hey you know what this ain't you our level of caring is, is is dependent on what's inside of our heart. There's a lot of people I know who are just so goddamn selfish that they don't give a shit about nothing else but themselves, and that's fine. You know, you are you are here on this life for one purpose, for yourself. Everyone is in this life for themselves. But if you find those people along the way, you know, friendship, balance, love, what the hell else is there? You make that tribe and you stick with them. You go on adventures. You build and you create. You uplift each other. You know, like Jason Momoa, he has his pride of gypsies. That's what he calls them, a pride of gypsies. And they create. That's all they do. They make films. They write. They're, they're storytellers. That's what I want in my life. Sometimes I'm like, I will say this right now. Sometimes I feel like I don't have it because it, we're all in scattered, we're all in different places, we're all not on the same page. I, I'm doing different projects right now. I got stuff lined up to try to get us on the page where, hey, we can do this. We're all creative. Why not put our creative juices together? Why not make stories? Why not do stuff together? Sure, we argue, we, you know, get, talk about the different directions that you know stuff could happen. Right now, the interviews I've mentioned that before it's 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 a it's a project of mine that I'm trying to get the C plus studios crew together and just to have some fun be creative and if it doesn't work out cool it doesn't work out I made the attempt yes I know I kept seeing I I I me 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 because yeah this is my baby this is my brainchild I'm being I am being selfish with this I am being in full control of this because there's certain things that I want. This is under the Papa Dukes Inc. Studios. That's why I got full creative control. But I am listening to what to what my to what my, to what my crew says because you know they we you know you got you got to listen. Everyone brings different aspects to the game of of what they specialize in. Can be as has come up so much with you know audio and editing and stuff like that. Steven, aka Biff. He's man that he that dude just he studies. He's he's a student of life. He's a student of 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 just the game. I, I call it the game. Period. He's a student of the game. He's always studying. He, uh, if it's not life, it's about you know audio production stuff like that because I mean he's he's a drummer. And if you guys haven't go to beef biff meat slab b i f f m E A T S L A B. Go to his website on you know or his YouTube. Listen to him play the damn drums. I, and people who have gone to see him play, you know, sets and stuff like that. You know, see his his covers. They're like, he just sits there. He doesn't like put any heart into it. Bullshit. 
listen to listen to how he's playing. He doesn't have to act all funny and get all fucking wild and, and shit like that for your amusement. Fuck you guys who say that shit. He plays with heart. And if his heart doesn't show him acting all wild and stuff like that just for the audience's sake, then he's not for you. I'm sorry, my boy's not for you. Jimbo. My boy Jimbo. He he killed he killed on, on Jimbo's Jimbo's Avengers, man. Our girl Selena, aka Minority. Yes, we still she that's her name, by the way, not ours. <laughs> you know, she she's she wants again she wants to get into the podcast game. Jimbo wants to get more, he wants to get back into it. He's been on his own adventure and stuff like that. And I'm proud of all of them for stepping up and taking control of their lives, seeing what's been going on out there, seeing what works for them, what doesn't work. And like I said, I'm proud of all of them. I'm proud of our entire damn crew because in this game called life, that's all we have. Just we have our just our one chance, you know, to make it to make an impact. So, I am here in Prescott Valley now. That was a yeah, folks. That was a that was a, a quick drive. No, I actually drove fast this time without me even realizing I was driving. <laughs> I was driving fast. I got here in. Whoa, this is a record. I got here in twenty minutes. I left the house. At eight, you know, it took me a minute to set up and everything. But I, I there's a certain point in time where I, I time it, where I leave, and then I was like, okay, this is how, this is how fast I can get there. I did leave at eight o'clock. I right now the time is eight seventeen, and from getting from Camp Verde to to Prescott Valley, eh, that's about maybe 30, 30 miles, thirty yeah thirty one miles, thirty one miles, and I made it here in twenty minutes, boy. <laughs> that's fast that is that's a record i love it anyway i love you all i'm gonna go get me some coffee i'm not gonna have you guys sit here listen to me co- get coffee anymore because then y'all fuck with me too much oh no let's no, no what let's answer a few questions folks let's answer a few questions people always ask me just lately you know more about the podcast game and the question that always seems to come up is time and time again how do i get started and how do i get over that stage fright how you get started is you grab your phone you all phones have some kind of voice recorder and if you don't have a voice recorder on your smartphone i highly suggest this one app called high q h-i dash letter q so get high q it's it's very good uh for a free well it has two versions it has a free one and it has the paid version but it's a life it's a lifetime it's a lifetime payment version where you, um, yeah, you can upload to different things. Hold on. All right, folks, Big Daddy is back. I actually have somewhere parts now. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was close. So it was a Yavapai County Sheriff. He was sitting in the middle, like like in the median, you know, we like the turning lane, you know, we turn in left and right. So he was parked right in the middle and I was like, who the hell is this damn car just sitting here? I, I I didn't think for a minute it was like a sheriff or somebody. So when I passed by, the way I had, I guess, the, the microphone, like, right underneath, like, my damn chin and stuff like that, he looked at me, I looked at him, and he looked away, but he looked back real quick. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> so <clears throat> I was looking in the rear view. Sure enough, I got I got maybe about eh, less than like quarter of a mile, and he turned on his lights and he f- turned around and he started coming. And he started coming pretty damn quick. He was in the left lane, I was in the right lane. He kind of I was he came up right next to me because there was I, where on the right lane, I was you know there was a couple of cars in front of me, but on his lane, left lane, he had some space to go up. He pulls up slowly next to me. I act like I'm listening to music and I was like, I'm going to see if this joker's looking at me. So I turned to my left and he's looking dead at me. I nod my head. He nods his head. Time to go. Light turns green and now off. I, like I said, off I go. He's, he's, he's following. He's following. And I kind of zoom in and out a few cars and he gets behind, you know, and people here in Prescott Valley for all their boldness, for all their shit talking, for all their chest puffing and stuff like that. These motherfuckers, they follow the rules. If it's 55, 
they're going 55. If they're going through residential area and they're going, if it says 35, guess what they're going? They're going 35. You must, you must abide by the rules here in Prescott Valley. Fuck you. There's a lot of people who are coming here from California who I, I know, I know who they are. I get right behind their asses when, when they're driving. I, we're zooming. <laughs> Boy, we're zooming. 55, hell no, we're going 75. Shit. Hell, we got we got places to go, things to see. So, yeah, thank you for those California transplants who, uh, who know how to drive right. <laughs> drive safe. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. But, um, yeah. It's been a, it's, this has been a fun morning. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming on this little adventure with me. It's been, it's been wild. It's been cool. It's been fun. Uh, I promise it will be, I'm going to start doing longer podcasts from now on. Uh, I know this, uh, there's, there's sometimes there's a lot of stuff I got to say and there's not enough time to say it, but I'm going to start saying it. Okay. So be on the lookout. I love you all. Go have an adventure. Keep your heads up and we'll see you soon. Okay. As always, mwah. peace.